my last few videos, I've been looking at some of the basic features of SAS. And then this one, I want to look at one of the more powerful ones, which is the each loop um, or the each directive. It lets us do loops in SAS. If you're used to JavaScript, you love loops probably. So uh, it's like a for each loop. It's really awesome. And we're going to see how they work to, we're going to look at a couple examples of how they work in this video. So I've, as I've looked at, uh, SAS or SCSS is a really cool language. It lets us do some really fun and neat stuff, mix-ins and imports and variables, and they're all really nice and handy, but there are some more advanced directives, things like loops, uh, the each loop, a for loop, um, and a few other things that are really, really cool. And I want to show you one of these with something I sort of did with my website, or what I should have done with my website. I built my website in a real rush just because I wanted to get it up. I'd redesigned it. I had some new stuff coming and I, I needed it to be there for mostly because I wanted it to be like the, the blog part. And I have a, a certain color scheme where every page has its own. And I had helper classes that I use because depending where I'm linking to, I change the color of the link that appropriate for that or even the links in the navigation uh, change and everything changes according to the, you know, the, the page or even the pages themselves, the colors of things change. Um, and sometimes I'm using a helper class to do that. And so I want to explore probably what I should have done, which was use a SAS each loop uh, to actually pull it off because uh, it's really handy. It, a couple lines of uh, code and you, you can pump out a whole lot of stuff. So really, really neat. Uh, let's go and look at how it works. Okay, so here we are in the code. If you want to see this code and play with it, there is a link in the description below that links to a code pen. So you can sort of go in and fiddle with it on your own. Uh, but let's dive in here. You can see I have an HTML file that's set up with nothing fancy, but I put a few links and each one of those has a uh, class on it. So we can actually check those out. Let's just turn uh, word wrap on for a second. Um, so I have a class of articles, YouTube, community and courses, which is exactly what I have on my own website. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy a little uh, list here and I'm doing this all in one CSS file, but uh, normally, you know, this would be a little more well organized and stuff. So if you know my website, you'll notice these colors, uh, you might recognize them. So these are the colors that I use and um, you might be going, well, what, what, what's he doing here? So this is a little bit of SAS uh, where we're creating a map. So I'm creating a color map here. Um, and basically it's saying I have a whole bunch of, you can treat these a little bit like variables. So these variables live inside of uh, a single variable pretty much called colors. Um, so I have one sort of thing here that's holding all of these in one place and I'm mapping the YouTube color to there, the articles. Anyway, you get the idea, I think. So um, what we're going to do with this is we're going to use the at, um, it, we're going to create an each loop using uh, SAS or SCSS. And so uh, to do that, we just have to start off by doing at each. And now we can do something. So if you're used to JavaScript and you've done loops before, you have probably uh, be very familiar with something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say each name and color. So I'm naming two things because inside of my map here, I have two things. I have this, which is my color's name. And then this is the color itself. As for the words that I'm putting here, I'm literally just making them up. I could say like, you know, uh, this would be one, two, or if you had a list of like social icons, this would be like, uh, you know, say this instead was um, like YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, Reddit, or something like that. Uh, this could be like social network, and then this could be color, or it could be link, or whatever you want it to be. The, the words here are literally ones that you're deciding on yourself. And the, what's really important here is then I put in and in colors. So it knows where to look for them. So what it's going to do is it's going to assume everything on this side of uh, my colon is the name and everything on this side is the color. So I'm saying go into this colors map and then go and find a whole what the name is and what the color is. So for each name and color, we want it to inside of colors, we want it to do something. So what do I want it to do in this case, because I've gone and it's sort of a simplistic idea, but I've given each one, you know, class YouTube uh, community, I've given each one of these links a different um, class on it. So I'm just going to create like a whole bunch of helper classes based on these colors that I'd already defined somewhere else uh, and that I'm using, uh, you know, throughout my site already anyway. Um, so what I want it to do is I actually want to make take this and use this as the class name and then set the color property for that class name right here. Now to do something like that, you know, we I want it to output dot YouTube and then have the, you know, this as the color that's output from it. And so uh, what I want to do is, you know, yeah, I, I can't just say a uh, name here. If I just do name like this, it's not actually going to work because whenever we use a SAS variable, it wants to output it as a value. 
Um, if you're using a SAS variables for anything, it always wants it to output as a value. So in this case, instead of putting name like that, what I actually need to do, I'm going to put a dot first because we want it to be a class. And I want it to be a class of YouTube. I have to do something called interpolation, which means I start with the hashtag and then I put these curly braces. And then in here, I can write in YouTube, uh, not YouTube, uh, I can write in name. So I'm taking name from here. And then after that, I can say the color should be color. So I'm going to save that and we'll take a look at what it did. And actually, let's just split this down so we can see our compiled CSS right away. It should be all the way down here at the bottom. So I have my YouTube is color that articles is color that um, if you're not sure at the beginning, it can be hard to know exactly when to use interpolation. So let's just say I tried doing it without the interpolation and I did something like that. I'm going to save and it's going to give me an error because it's saying that um, there's a compilation error invalid CSS after da da da. Um, it expected a selector and this wasn't a valid selector, so it didn't let me use it. And same thing if I just did something like this without the dot and I hit save, um, I'm it, just like before, I'm getting a uh, an error. Now this time it's a little bit of a different error, but again, it's telling me that it's not working. So if ever you try using a variable somewhere and it doesn't work, try putting that variable inside of the hashtag uh, curly braces and then saving it and success, um, it actually works that time. So. Uh, just to watch out for that uh, when when to use it. But again, if it's not being used as a value, so we have our property and our value, if you want to use this anywhere else, it has to be used uh, inside of this to get some interpolation going on. So it actually outputs the way you want it to. And uh, doing all that, I looked at this, but you can see here now uh, clearly it, it's actually working. And I could do a few other things on it. So say this was really just for links because um, you might be going, well, color bold. Like, there's other ways I could do this. I could just seems to be a bit of overkill, but then maybe um, I want this to only be for links. So here, what I could actually do is say uh, link and then the name. And then I could also have in here uh, font weight bold and I could save on that. Um, now it's not working right away. I'll go and fix the markup in a second. Um, and you can see it's pulling through and doing some interesting stuff. Uh, you can see it's putting the bold and it's doing the color. Um, and now I have like my link YouTube. So we, we don't have to keep it uh, together with that. Um, so, you know, this could just be really handy for developing a whole bunch of helper classes like this. It can also be really helpful because you only you could have your colors laid out. Everything's in one spot. So all of a sudden when I'm changing and I could be using this every, like in a, a whole ton of uh, different places, but then changing it in one place obviously would um, make it change everywhere. Um, but I could even use this, say, to set up my font sizes and stuff like that. So I could reuse um, a very similar map. So say I had and I'm going to fast forward while I do this. Um, so we have all my font sizes listed out and it's nice because you can sort of just bang it out quickly like that. And then I can come down to here and actually let's just we can use another each loop. And so we could say each uh, tag and size in font sizes. And then here, so this would be just tag, but I don't need the dot because I want it to select the actual tag. And here the font size would be size. And if I hit save on that, it should compile. And if we come and look further down, we have that all plugged out. So it's not like this is saving me a boatload of time, but it's obviously easier just to list things out like this. You're not rewriting font size every time. You don't need the semicolons and all of that. Uh, and again, these are really simplistic examples of it. You can get much more complicated with using each loops and do some a lot of really creative things. You can even have it, you know, you're using image names in your map and it's linking to your images that you've set up to have icons and all sorts of really cool stuff. So there it is. That's the each loop for uh, SAS or each directive and really Really handy and useful. Um, as I said, you can actually get into sub maps and do some really neat stuff with it. I've actually linked to a few articles down below that go into some more detail and some deeper stuff you can do with it if this is something that is interesting to you or seems really cool. And of course, I have also linked it to my course. I have a course on SAS now. So if this is something you really want to learn and leverage, the SAS Master Edition of the class goes into all the directives goes really deep. And of course, I try and show you real situations where you might actually use these types of things uh, in the real world as much as possible. So if that sounds interesting to you, go and check the link out in the description below. And thank you so much for watching this. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here at my channel. Thank you so much, guys, especially Lauren, who's my supporter of awesome. Thank you very much. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below or come join us at the community. There is a link to the community. It's free to join. 
whole bunch of stuff and fun conversations going on over there. So come and join us there. It's just a Discord channel where we are having a lot of fun. So I look forward to seeing you there and chatting with you over there. But until you do show up or until the next video, the next time I see you, whenever it is, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.